Alrighty then. <clears throat> so this is my brand new 2016 DXR. And this is 2019, so it didn't seem like it would be brand new, but it has zero hours on it. The guy I bought it from a few months back, bought it, licensed it, uh, took it home, put it in its garage, never used it. Hasn't been off the trailer, not a single scratch in the hole. Zero hours, starts and runs like a brand new machine. And I'm getting ready to cut it up into pieces, pull all the guts out of it, and throw it away. Now the reason I'm doing that, because I'm building a mini jet boat. And um, I'm looking at the uh, engine compartment. You can see um, this is straight down. <clears throat> Not coming out without removing parts off the engine which I'm sure is normal, but I don't want to remove parts off the engine to get it out. And plus if I have this top off, everything else is going to be easier access. Got the exhaust stuff back here, you know, electronics in the box right there, you know, and gas tank up there, but I'm not, I'm just pulling the parts out of the gas tank, the, the fuel pump and gauge and all that. So, anyway, a new jet boat's going to have a brand new engine jet. Um, and this nice pretty machine is going to get all tore up and thrown away. Kind of sucks. Kind of hard to do is start cutting on that, <laughs> cutting on that thing. But from what I can tell, everybody says these are impossible to um, split the top off the bottom without destroying one or the other. So I guess I'll just uh, take their advice and not even try. Um, but I bought a, a jet boat kit from up in Idaho. There's all the components more or less. But I did have an issue with the the center keel section, you know, it's uh, 10 millimeter thick and they didn't bend it right. The bend in the bottom does not match the transom where the transom sits. It's um, about three quarters of an inch too narrow on the bends where the transom sits flat in the center section. So you can't bend it flat and then re-bend it. So I took it into an industrial um, fab shop and I'm having them at least get the angles right and I'm gonna have to trim the transom to, uh, to fit down in it properly. Um, this is the jet pump and intake. Um, I bought a shortened drive shaft and the intake and um, you know, my big concern here is <clears throat> they say there's gonna be very little clearance between the engine and the bottom of the boat. Very little. So when you mount this intake, there's a ring that goes in the bottom of the boat that this intake mounts to. Um, the intake has to match the transom, which is, you know, right here, angle and the bottom of the boat for the intake grate and all that stuff. Well, you know, if you have eighth inch clearance with the motor I'm using and you get that off just a little bit it's not going to fit so the plan is to once I get my center keel section back bring it home tack on the sides you know the whole outer hole sections um, for some of the runners in the bottom and then um, set the motor in and the intake in it and and try and you know make sure that I'm getting the angles that I need before I weld everything together you know and I didn't have the hole cut for the intake ring so I'll be cutting that out myself but at least I'll be able to make those adjust adjustments to how it goes in 
you know, preferably you don't have to adjust because, you know, then your intake's not level with the bottom of the boat and I've got the UHMW kit that goes around that and it's all supposed to be perfectly level on the bottom. But, you know, if I have to raise the intake slightly just to get clearance on the engine, then so be it, I guess. I'm not sure what, you know, obviously the intake rate would be higher than the UHMW, which the problem is that is that things can get caught on the UHMW as they scrape the bottom of the boat, which obviously wouldn't be a good thing, but I suppose if I ended up with that, I could possibly sand the UHMW to where it goes down to the grate where there's no lip there to catch it, you know, and there would be, um, you know, no, nothing sticking up down past the grate to catch things as it slides on a rock or whatever. So I'd rather do that than not have my engine mount in there without hitting the bottom of the boat. So anyway, it's the beginning of the project. Getting ready to cut the top off this thing, pull all the components, um, steering, all that stuff. That'll be interesting. I'll try and do videos as I come across things that might be otherwise, you know, tricky to think people would have to figure out. I haven't found any anything out there on someone building one of these boats as far as videos and instruction goes. You know, the factory, you know, instructions don't give you much. And you pretty much just got to figure it out as you go. You know, in RSR, you know, they build boats. They've got a lot of information. You know, you can talk to them. You know, like they informed me about, you know, having to cut the, um, the exhaust chamber. You got to shorten it because it doesn't, um, doesn't fit in the boat otherwise. So, you know, and he, he told me about where to cut it and all that stuff. So you got a lot of information, you know, they're good to work with. You know, I had a bend issue on that center keel section. I'll just deal with because I'm two states away um, from them. And uh, it's not an easy drive up there. So, anyway, I'm gonna cut up this beauty. Hate to do it, but gotta be done.